the United States of America. Brother Branham plainly said with thus saith the Lord that a national revival will not take place, which matches the book of Revelation prophecy in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18, that the United States is the beast out of the land that will cause the mark of the beast to be laid down. Let's listen to the Thus Saith the Lord quote from Jehovah Jireh, 1961. If you put a righteous president in every county in the whole United States is still gone, she'll never rise again. Thus saith the Lord. 1956, she made her fatal move. We learn from this quote that we should not pray for a nationwide revival in the United States. But this quote should not stop us from praying for our lost loved ones to be saved and should not stop us from having revivals that bring them to justification and or sanctification and or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Also, this quote should not stop us from praying for our elected leaders and for peace in our countries, as well as for souls to be saved. As Paul said, it was good and acceptable to do so in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I exhort thee, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Other verses encourage us to keep praying for souls within our nation, and of course, not a national revival. I've recently seen God witness to this truth of praying for individual souls, as I prayed numerous times over the past three or four years for the Roe v. Wade Supreme Court ruling to be overturned based upon Ezekiel 9, verse 4, and Ezekiel 22, verses 30 and 31. And God heard the many prayers of the saints when Roe v. Wade was overturned on June 24th, 2022. Ezekiel 9, 4 spoke of, sighing and crying for all the abominations done in the midst thereof. And Ezekiel 22, verses 30 and 31, said God was looking for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before God for the land that I should not destroy it. And friends, we know Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, meaning we should be praying today, sighing and crying for all the abominations done in America and, of course, every other country. And we also know God is looking for men and women who will be prayer warriors, as kings and priests unto God, they'll make intercessions unto God for the individuals in our countries that will still be saved. Furthermore, numerous message churches around the United States and even the world are reporting revivals, which I believe in and support, as I've been a part of revivals in the past as well. The second revival is the Bride's Revival, or Latter Rain, which is yet to come in the future. It's my opinion that when Brother Branham spoke that the Bride hasn't had a revival yet, he was referring to the last and final revival before the rapture, which he taught was the latter rain. Let's listen to the first quote from the third seal, when Brother Bram says the bride hasn't had a revival yet. Oh, they've got millions and millions and millions of church members, but not a revival, no, sir. Amen. No. Uh, the, the bride hasn't had a revival yet. Uh, there's been no revival there, no manifestation of God to stir the bride yet, see. We're looking for it. Yeah. It'll take those seven unknown thunders back there to wake her up, I guess. Uh -oh. He'll send it. He promised it. Amen. Now, why? Here's another quote from the first seal where Brother Branham links rapturing faith with the seven thunders that he had previously mentioned in the third seal quote. So again, we get a connection between Brother Branham linking rapturing faith, the seven thunders, and a revival for the bride together. So this would be a different kind of revival. This would be the latter rain revival. Let's listen to the quote. Right. And I believe that through those seven thunders will be revealed in the last days in order to get the bride together for rapture and faith. Because what we've got right now, we, we wouldn't be able to do it. There's something we've got to step farther. We... We can't have enough faith for divine healing, Harley. We've got to have enough faith to be changed in a moment and be swept up out of this earth. And again, here's another quote from the first seal linking the rapturing faith to the seven thunders. Let's listen to the quote. But when these seven thunders over in Revelation 10 utter, he said, don't write them at all. They're mysteries. We don't know what they are yet. But my opinion, they'll be revealed right away. And when they 
going to do it, it'll give faith to that rapture and grace to that church. We just moved through everything that we know of, through all the dispensations. We've watched everything. We've seen the mysteries of God. We've seen the appearing of the of the great uh, gathering together of the bride in the last days. And friends, I also want to say that I believe Brother Ram grew in his understanding of the seven thunders. I believe when he preached about the seven thunders during the seven seal series, it was before he had the full understanding of the seven thunders, which he told us later in 1964 and also in the Church Age book. He told us the seven thunders were the revelations contained in the seven seals. So it's my opinion that we already have the revelation of the seven thunders because we have the revelation of the seven seals according to Revelation chapter 10 verses 1 through 7. Earlier this year, I preached two sermons about the seven thunders and the seventh seal. Please contact me if you'd like a link to those sermons. And here's two more quotes from the Church Age book where Brother Bram says there'll be a showdown at the latter reign. And Brother Bram said there'll be a second forerunner of Christ, which was his ministry, and he would plant for the latter reign or sow for the latter reign. So Brother Bram said that in chapter 5, and then in chapter 10, Brother Bram calls the latter reign rapturing faith. Let's listen to the quotes. Then in the latter rain will come a Mount Carmel showdown. Watch this carefully now to see it in the word. John was the forerunner of Malachi 3. He planted the former rain and was rejected by the organizations of his day. Jesus came and had a Mount Transfiguration showdown. The second forerunner of Christ will sow for the latter rain. Jesus will be the showdown between the denominations and creeds, for he will come to back up his word and take his bride in the rapture. The first showdown was Mount Carmel. The second was the Mount Transfiguration. And the third will be Mount Zion. He is doing it as started in verse 23, by the teaching or former rain. Next will come the harvest rain or rapturing faith. The third revival is the Holy Ghost baptism revival caused by the message from the Holy Ghost to the angel or messenger to each church age. There are numerous quotes wherein Brother Bram speaks about the revival that God started in his ministry and how it had not yet denominated and would not denominate. This is the third kind of revival, which is the Holy Ghost baptism revival to each church age. Here's one example from a quote referring to this kind of revival from Harvest Time, 1964. Let's listen to the quote. Listen, friends, what day are we living in? We've had a 15-year revival. How many can say amen to that? What organization raised up? None. They tried to get me to make an organization. They said, well, you make organization, Brother Bram, on your ministry. It'll be, now, not me. I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about the message of the hour, the day. Also, here's an important quote wherein Brother Branham said the bride had already been awakened, which is opposite of what he said in the third seal, 1963, which could mean a couple different things. First, it could be the revelation of the seven seals awaken the bride's revelation of the Bible, specifically the finishing of the mystery of God, as spoken of in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. Or second, it could mean the awakened bride in this quote meant the true bride was awakened with the baptism of the Holy Ghost message that Brother Branham delivered as the angel or messenger to this church age, which I call the third revival for the sake of this video. Let's listen to the quote. They're crying, believing that they will be awakened. They're good people. Why is it? What have they done? They have not recognized the awakening of the bride. They... By being a Christian, they feel the pull of the hour, but they haven't recognized what's been done. Amen. That's what's making them feel that way. Yeah. They know something's supposed to happen. But see, they're looking for it way off in the future to come when it's already happened right by you. Yeah. A fourth kind of revival is the daily revival we need in our human spirits or minds every single day. Note specifically, this is not a revival of the human soul, as I'll teach at the end of this video. This is proven by both the Holy Scripture and quotes from Brother Branham. Two scriptures out of others, no doubt, prove this truth. The first is 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, which says, Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And the same author, St. Paul, wrote Ephesians 4, verse 23, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You never see Paul saying, renew your soul. And there's no scripture that says your soul needs renewed every single day. 
Here's a quote from How Can I Overcome 1963, uh, wherein Brother Branham taught the same. Let's listen to the quote. And I want to take my subject this morning of this. How can I overcome? Now, I chose this because that I think that it's a time that we should never let the spirit of revival die. Amen. We've got to keep in revival. Constantly revive every day. Amen. Paul said he had to die daily that Christ could live. And we must never let that revival die within us. The soul needs one filling or baptism only. Friends, some believers think their soul needs refilled and can have many refillings. If we rightly divide this idea by the scripture, though, we find this is not true. The truth is the soul gets one filling, also called a sealing, or seal unto the day of redemption, as taught in Ephesians 4 verse 30. It's the human mind or spirit that gets many refillings and really has the potential of this refilling happening every single day. Notice the New Testament never uses the language of refilled in the soul, or sealed again, or sealed a second time. The Bible speaks of only one quickening. Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 5, You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And verse 5, When ye were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Also Colossians 2, verse 13, You being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Friends, search the scriptures. The book of Acts never says refilled with the Holy Ghost in their souls. So we cannot add to the word of God and say that the soul needs refilled again and again or many baptisms in the soul. There's only one baptism in the human soul. The only Bible language is that we are sealed in the soul one time unto the day of redemption according to Ephesians 4 verse 30. Grieve not the spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Also Ephesians 1:13. After that ye heard the word of truth, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22, Who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And again, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, proves the renewing or refilling of the human spirit or mind can potentially take place every day, which is only possible through dying to self daily, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31, I die daily. I want to share two quotes from God's prophet, Brother Branham, that teach this truth. The first is from the token, 1964, February 8th. Brother Branham said, you can backslide, but it does not mean in your soul. And he quoted Ephesians 4, verse 30. So this means you can only backslide in the mind if your soul is sealed by the Holy Ghost baptism. Let's listen to the quote. Dear friends, if you ever heal, if you live long enough, you're going to get sick again. If you one time take that token, you've had it forever. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. Not to the next revival, you wasn't sealed. You got emotionally worked up. But you are dead. And your life is hidden God through Christ and you're sealed by the Holy Ghost. If you are once baptized into that Holy Spirit, you can backslide. That is true, but you can't get away from that seal, you're sealed into it. Lastly, in the sermon, Souls That Are In Prison Now, Brother Branham said, the seal is in the soul. And although he didn't say Ephesians 4 verse 30, he basically said the same words. So we know there's only one sealing, there's only one filling of the soul. But the human mind can be filled and refilled every single day. Let's listen to the quote. Now the soul of man is not the body of man, it's the soul. And the soul is something that's uh, the nature of the spirit. And then when the nature of a man, when he said, we are dead, the scripture plainly tells us that we are dead and our lives are hitting God through Christ, sealed there by the Holy Spirit. Now, it wasn't that your body died. It wasn't your spirit died. It was the nature of your spirit died, see? The nature, which is the soul, the nature of your soul is uh, is God. If you're born again, if it's not, it's of the world. 
Anything that begin has to end. So therefore, the only way that you can have eternal life is to have a life that never did begin. I'd like to add another quote from 1963, What Shall I Do With This Jesus Called Christ? Brother Branham said the dynamics of the church will be a refilling of the Holy Spirit. So based upon the Bible scriptures and other quotes from Brother Branham, this can only mean a refilling in the human spirit or mind. Because, as we've already showed, there are no scriptures that support a refilling of the soul, or a second baptism of the soul, or another sealing of the soul. Let's listen to the quote. The dynamics of this church will be a refilling of the Holy Spirit. That we have worked in a small measure while the headstone is coming down to unite with the body. But when that head and body unites together, the full power of the Holy Ghost will raise her up just exactly like it. Even the dead is dead in Christ for hundreds of years ago. Will rise in the beauty of his holiness and take a flight to the skies. The dynamics is the Holy Spirit. In closing, friends, I hope this video has been a blessing. You know, this question has been on my heart for numerous years, especially after I would listen to the third seal and hear Brother Branham say, the bride hasn't had revival yet. And then, of course, if you listen to all the sermons from the seven seals, you realize he's talking about the revival for the rapture or the latter rain. And remember, friends, there's numerous quotes from Brother Branham where he says his ministry started a revival that's gone 10, 15, or more years and hasn't stopped and would not be denominated so if Brother Branham's ministry started a revival, that has to be the Holy Ghost baptism revival in the soul. And if the bride hasn't had a revival yet, that could only be the latter rain revival, which would be rapturing faith a short time before the literal rapture, the body change, which is the moment in twinkling of an eye when death is swallowed up in victory. And our mortality puts on immortality. May I encourage you to get a refilling of the Holy Ghost in your spirit or mind every single day. Die out to your own human desires or human thoughts and fill your mind with the thoughts of God Almighty. And of course, if you do this long enough, then your soul will be sealed or filled or quickened one time unto the day of your redemption. If you have any questions, concerns, or testimonies about this video, please contact me. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart. Then Wednesday night, we expect to have a great climax in the service and praying that sometime along this way that something will happen to the people that will set their hearts afire for God, that an old-fashioned revival will break out in New England. It's tried on the West Coast, it's tried in the Middle East, tried in the South, but seemingly that this is our last place to try. New England. Here's where our forefathers landed for this freedom of religion on Plymouth Rock. It is from these sacred soils here that praying men and women went forth to establish this great uh, spiritual economy that we are uh, privileged to serve today. No American could be ashamed of their forefathers who landed in this country, who went to church packing guns, who came here for our freedom of religion, went on horseback, covered in old wagons, fought the Indians and so forth to get to go to church. Those bloods bathe this soil. If we'll be sincere and believe in the God that they believed in and serve Him with the same reverence that they served Him with, we'll see a revival again. And I believe it will start in New England. God's willing to do it if we're willing to carry it. New England can have a revival that will sweep not New England but the world. Because we're all hungry for the bread of life. Back to the old ways again. Back to the old-fashioned gospel. And let's keep it moving. There's enough people in here tonight who will take that up on their heart. I tell you, if you'd be making headlines in the newspaper a week from now, you got all New England. It can be done if you just let God fill your heart and soul and life. The rest that will take place, He'll guide you from then on. Well, I'm praying for a revival in America, and I'm wondering sometimes if it will, if I'm not praying in vain. I hope not. Today I met with some man from the New England State 
And if the Lord willing, the complete month of May is going to be a revival in here. If the Lord permits, we're coming here for a one solid month in May for a month's revival. Want to try with all that in me if God will permit to try to bring God us have that the people might be anointed and their eyes be opened. Oh, I pray God shake this New England country again. And I'll say this in respect of the gospel and of the Lord Jesus. If this nation ever has a revival, it'll never have it up on intellectual theology. It'll take the real, true, genuine, wine, Holy Spirit power and manifestation to shake the People until they are long to see the glory of God. We need it so badly. And it's so badly needed here. I feel strange. That is to say, I'm doing my level best by the help of God to lay the foundation. What you've got to do here, if, if there's ever a revival that strike. Anything else, if I ever see one speck of mercy left, it's you new angry people. Yeah. Now believe me, if you believe me to be his servant. And unless this church is built upon the rock of Jesus Christ, with the, his power, his Holy Spirit, his sanctifying blood to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, you're fighting the wind. Every one of you, friends, it takes all of us together to bring this revival. Let us pray and ask God to send us a real old-fashioned revival. Pour out His Spirit on New England and set these ministers' hearts to fire throughout the country and save such as can be saved. 